Okay. So as we start, um, you know, I just wanted to want want us to look at one verse, which is uh, uh, pretty familiar. It's uh, Proverbs sixteen and verse three. Right, Proverbs sixteen, verse three talks about committing our works to the Lord. Um, you know, it says, "Commit your works to the Lord, and your thoughts will be established." Right. So. What does this commit mean? Commit means to surrender. Commit means to hand over uh, your works to the Lord. So not in terms of, uh, you know, I'm just, whatever I need to do, I'm committing to you. And uh, now it's it's on you. You know, I'm not going to do anything. It's not that. right? It's, it's like that burden, the weight you hand over to the Lord. And the thing is this, the second part of the verse says that, and your thoughts will be established, right? So we know that um, you know we need to have clear thoughts to have clear action. We need to have clear plans in order to have clear action, right? Clarity of thought leads to clarity of action, because if we are not sure, then that will show in our in our action what we are doing, right? And maybe in our speech also. So here the law, the promise is that when we commit to the lord when we are when we are you know handing it over to the lord and saying lord i need help with this or i need wisdom um or you're saying lord i need your your anointing your approval everything then the fact is that the thoughts will be established you know right down to the thought level uh, established means what it means to make strong right make stable so our thoughts can go here, here, wire, but he'll make it stable. He'll make it strong. He'll make it steady, so that what comes out of our thought, which is speech and action, will also be of the same manner. Now, it's such a beautiful promise, and um, you know something that we can put to practice when we are when we when we look at you know challenged by huge tasks, when we are challenged by you know uh, like overwhelming. Uh, or impossible deadlines, or overwhelming responsibilities, or when you're challenged by the complexity of the things, you know, it's so complex to solve the problem. Where do I start? Right? So, when we commit to the Lord, um, He establishes our thoughts. You know, we have the Holy Spirit indwelling us who establishes at, right at the thought level so that what flows out. Um, speech and action will be established as well. So, yeah. So this promise is for us, for us to experience daily, right? So let's do that. Let's just commit. Maybe you know, maybe we have certain things that is pressing on us, and um, you know, tasks to be done, responsibilities to be carried out. Um, let's commit that to the Lord, right? And expect our thoughts to be established by Him. Father God, this morning, even as we come before you, Lord, we we commit ourselves to you and commit the tasks or responsibilities that we have, Father God, or big or small, God, we commit it into your mighty hands, God. Uh, we roll it off our back, Lord, uh, as a burden and uh, onto you, Master. And Lord, even as we do that, Lord, we thank you for this promise that you would establish our thoughts. Our thoughts will be established. And so, Master, we pray that uh, may our thoughts be made strong, may our thoughts be made stable, Lord, and I pray that our speech and action, Lord, which is required to fulfill the responsibilities, to fulfill the roles and tasks, Lord, that will be strong as well. And that will be established as well. And so, God, we, we thank you for this promise. And uh, Lord, may this be a reality in each one of our lives, Lord. And we reach out in faith, O oh Father God, knowing that this is your desire for our thoughts to be established, for our actions to be strong, because um, you have great plans and purposes for us, Lord. And the way that you lead us, O oh God, in paths of righteousness is to fulfill, Lord, your will and your plans, O oh God, for our lives. And Master, we we pray that we would experience this daily at a, at a, at a thought level, Lord. We thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Okay. So... Um, Okay, so we've been looking at uh, some practical things, right? And we looked at, um, uh, like, I think we, we looked at uh, different forms. Where did we stop yesterday? Um, sorry? 
uh, about ministering as a as a pastor, ministering as a pastor, ministering as a visiting minister, right? Okay, okay. So in, in the ap appendix, which is an additional, you know, section, we have some notes. Okay, now these could be th these are overlaps of what we have already seen, right? Uh, something on authoritative speaking um and so on so i'm not going to go through everything i'm just going to uh, touch upon some things let me just share the notes here okay one is about the thesis and the antithesis or antithesis or however you want to say it like so thesis is something that you're uh you're stating okay. so something that you're stating saying that okay it can be a simple statement like god is a good God. Okay, now that is a thesis, right? Now the an antithesis is something that is the opposite of that, which is God is not good, right? God has does not have your good in mind, or God is not always good. That is anti antithesis, right? So uh, when whenever we are maybe in in a message, it's good to have that tension or theses and antitheses you know what is it that you're stating and what are the things that are opposing it okay so we can build uh, on the thesis and we can also present uh, the antithesis okay so which means that what is the antithesis to that okay for 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 the for the statement god is a good god you know how do you how do you present that you know, it's obviously based on the nature of God, the character of God, what the Word uh, says about God, what Jesus came to represent uh, as the Father, and how He lived His life, uh, His ministry, etc., the redemptive work of the cross, all that goes on to prove that, you know, goes on to state that God is a good God. Now, what would be the antithesis? The antithesis could be, you know, why is there evil? Why is there suffering, right, in the world? Um, you know why is why are there wars? Why are why is creation not perfect? Why is there corruption? You know, because of which people could come to the conclusion uh, of the antithesis. Okay, so you get these the terms are right. You know, you get the clarity of the terms like thesis and antithesis. Something that you are stating, something that which is the very opposite of what you are stating. So, um, so one way to uh, present is to build to state both right um, to state what the thesis is and to also state what the antithesis is so when we so what happens when we present okay this is what you know these are some views that we have why god does not exist or why god is bad you know these are some views and then when you present the thesis and those very arguments uh, that that are there uh, to state that God is not a good God, and from the thesis, when you present an um, a reason, like present reasons for why God is good, which could be you know, and and the reasons for dismantling you know these ideas why God is not good, then it becomes a very powerful uh, message, right? It becomes a very clear message, right? It is not just you know you have to believe because I'm saying it kind of a thing but you're actually giving those reasons scriptural reasons and whatever reasons are there to refute that are also being handled right in a scriptural manner right so um so it's it's good it's good to you know know this it's good to uh, present this in this manner right so that is about the thesis and the antithesis now if it's going to be um a short message if it's going to be a brief message now we may not be able to present a lot of theses and antitheses you know it could be maybe at the at the most maybe two points or three points right but so you need to be aware of that you know if it's a uh, due to the uh, i mean the time duration of whatever you're presenting it's good to understand that and then present accordingly okay um okay I'm just skipping a few things here because it's we've already seen that um, developing a burden. We we said okay earlier that you need to be you need to have in your heart or you need to be passionate about what you are actually speaking about. You know, you can't be detached about what you're you know saying. You know, this is 
something the job i need to do i i better do it and you know it can't be like that so we need to have a burden um and um which means that you are engaged you know in your heart with your emotions about this particular thing that you're talking about whatever it is that you're sharing that your heart is engaged in it your you know there is a burden for it you know if it is a you know when you say burden normally we associate that with the a burden for souls right i have a burden for souls god got a burden for souls to be saved you know, it's a normal thing you know i also have a burden so we you know present that but but it's for every any topic that you're sh sharing about anything that you're sharing about so um so the, where you are you are so consumed you are so wrapped up in the in the subject right in the truth that you're presenting you know uh, certain quotes here uh, you know john stott supposed to have said so possess the truth that it possesses you i uh, jeremiah 29 uh, jeremiah says you know his word is in my heart like a fire okay, a fire shut up in my bones i'm weary of holding it in indeed i can cannot right, jeremiah 20 and verse 9 so he's saying you know it's it's it i got this word word of god in my heart this message of truth in my heart and it's like a fire within me right he's saying that it's just burning bright it's burning it's like a raging fire and i need to i can't hold it in i need to share it right so i come to that place uh, regarding the message right so which means how do we come to that place right you take it to the lord right get revelation about it from from god get to know god's heart and you know you be moved according to god's heart okay uh, god god is like okay uh, i i have compassion on this and you are feeling totally you're not feeling any compassion okay sometimes we're feeling right hey, how can i have compassion for these people or how can i have compassion for these kind of people right but god says he has compassion so the the thing is to pray and ask the lord lord i want to see the way you see it i want to see this i want to see this people i want to see this i want to get your viewpoint i want to get your heart that's the only way that we will have uh the same heart that god has for uh it it could be a it could be a uh, you know it could it, it could be a perspective meaning you know it, it need not be just people it could be about something uh, about the truth that is being stated right to have the same perspective to come in agreement with god on that okay so that's so that is preparation of the heart right that is preparation of the heart so we many times it's it's not just putting information together but it's really to come to have the same kind of a emotions or feeling that god has about something right okay um okay some things here some practical things on developing a burden okay how do i develop this so what is a burden first of all <laughs> huh worry about worry about okay uh see when you say burden it just means a weight something that is heavy right that's all it's a bur when you say it's a burden uh, you know like we call donkeys and horses beasts of burden why because they are able to carry that load and keep going right so burden is just a weight huh he is a burden to me <laughs> so you know he's constantly worrying about something you know so but here it's used in a positive way in the sense that if this is a weight that i feel about this matter about this you know about this social evil about this whatever you know this condition of people or you know the spiritual state of that particular church you know so you feel a weight in your heart right so that's why we call it a burden so how do we develop that uh, and you know the fact is that uh, is it is it necessary at all right yes it is because then otherwise we can be totally detached from the message that we are sharing that we are uh, preaching right uh, a few things here 
prayerfully focus on your own life you know how has god changed my life in uh, understanding this truth uh, etc right um and of course engaging with the word of god what does the word of god say because the word of god is alive the holy spirit lights up the word the holy spirit reveals the word speaks the, writes the word upon our heart so um so when we pray and when we allow the word to get into our hearts right sown in our hearts and that's the wonderful you know that changes everything right uh, it's like switching on a light in a dark room right okay um you know some other practical things is ask god for a vision okay ask god for a vision okay god you know uh, these are some practical things right so lord if they actually receive the truth this particular truth right how will their life change if they receive it if they walk in it how is their life going to change right so and obviously when you when you actually visualize it you see that wow this is it you know they their life is going to be totally transformed they're going to be walking in victory uh, you know they're going to be passionate about uh, about the lord and so on so we we think of that we 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 ask god god you know how can this how when they change how will it be so when you when you see that when you realize that then that gives you that burden okay i need to really share this you know this is god's heart i need to share that and this is how their life can totally change okay um okay so the other thing we talked about the thesis and antithesis we can also you know how we can also think about and pray about you know how people's lives in our culture are totally changed because of the the opposite of what you're actually going to be sharing the truth that you're going to be sharing how people's lives have changed or how people's lives have been deceived how people's lives have been destroyed now that also gives us a burden right okay so these are some things that we can work on okay um okay the i think major points illustrations applications we you know we we looked at that earlier so i'm not going to go into that i just i just want to uh, you know go into um this section on different ways of presentation like the methods of presentation which is uh, point number 7 right steps number 7 methods of presentation okay so your, your your message can be you know structured um like we looked at word study we looked at topical study we looked at inductive kind of a you know sermon uh, so it can be that but within that you know overall picture could be that 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 could be the overall direction but within that you know how else can i present to be effective okay the first one can be an argument in the sense let's say uh, you know create like for example a topic like creation or evolution god or science right so you can actually preempt or anticipate these are some of the arguments that people can present okay so just like the thesis and antithesis but you've got so you're saying okay these are 10 things or 10 things that people state why you know or, or people have uh, reasons people have for science why people believe in science or evolution and so on so it's a it's an argument so you present that argument these are the arguments people have and you uh, you know you uh, kind of address that argument from the truth of god's word okay so so th- you know this kind of a topic is is great for that right um, uh, things like god or science uh, or evolution or creation and what else do you think what else do you think can be good for this kind of a this kind of an approach right what do you think is social drinking okay like a glass of wine you know these kind of things right so these are you know which um, yeah anything else that you can think of huh 
no no uh, what what other topics do you think can have this kind of an approach like an like an argument presenting an argument uh, which is against the topic and then from the scripture stating what do you think what else huh head covering head, head covering okay mm mm-hmm. Mm. 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 Right. It, ah, so it may not be very, very apparent, right? So, but it's still there. It's not like it's not there, but you know, maybe so. Things like entertainment, social norms, like these are things that can actually be very effectively presented, very effectively preached, uh, rather than saying, "Okay, this is what God says," and then you go through various things. You know, to really bring it out and say, um, you know, uh, an argument. You know, this is an argument from. You know, can I can a pastor go to a movie theater? Can I, <laughs> you know? Uh, <laughs> yeah, so so that's uh, you know, can a pastor act in a movie? Wow, oh, even more scandalous. So so you know things like that, right? Uh, is it okay for a Christian to be uh, in politics? Right? Can a Christian be a try to be a politician? Hmm. Can we do? Can pastors be businessmen? Uh, yeah, so those kind of things. But I think that kind of is there, you know, like because um, in I think in some sometimes in villages I've seen pastors have like catering business, you know, <laughs> <laughs> all weddings <laughs> come here, <laughs> you know, those kind of things. Sh- Shalom caterer. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah so this so uh, yeah so these kind of things are um, you know uh, it's good to have you know this method of preaching where you anticipate um, you know and you bring out all those objections that could be there from society from you know all the questions maybe and you answer it right and um, and if you look at you know some if you go through corinthians Paul actually uses some of this, right? So this is what about head covering and about this matter, about that matter, and then he addresses each of these topics like that. Okay, the second one could be an admonition. What is an admonition? Huh? Warning, rebuke, right? Consequences. You're talking about a, a, a admonition is like uh, it's a it's a strict word. You're ad, you're actually rebuking some someone, uh, uh, rebuking a particular, uh, or bringing um, a kind of a. Um, you're bringing a remedy to the situation, but at the same time, you're addressing the person or the group of people who are indulging in certain things, right? So you're bringing in correction rather. So that's an admonition, right? So, um, so you know, it could be about serious things, right? Serious matters. Which uh, maybe the Lord has put in your heart to bring, right? It could be about sexual immorality. It could be about something that people are still continuing in. Maybe it's about lukewarmness, uh, you know, uh, in the, about their spirituality, and so on, right? Some practices which are detrimental to to the faith, right? To the church, to their own spiritual life, things like that. So. You know, uh, the thing is this: it has to be approached. You know, admin, ad, admonition is necessary, right? Paul admonishes. Right? He, he, he talks about he um, uh, he uses some strong words, right? Galatian church. What does he say to the church and to the Galatians? He said, "You foolish Galatians, right? Who bewitched you, right? Who cast a spell on you?" And he, why is he saying that? Because they were saying that, yeah, Jesus saves, 
but you need to keep the law in order to experience the work of the spirit or you know or you need to be circumcised etc so you know he comes in very strongly but we need to understand to, that it has to be from the perspective of grace okay so it 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 cannot be you know we, of course we give the consequence we give the warning this will happen but we also need to present the way out you can't lock a person in a room you know and throw the key away right it's it's like saying hey now i'm stuck what do i do now we need to say hey this is the key i'm giving you the key the door is locked but you need to use the key open and that's the way of grace that there is a way out which is repentance which is coming back to you know restoration it is possible but this is the way you know you've been given you've been offered a way out which is christ himself right so while we give uh, 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 you know we need to admonish we need to be direct um, and, and certain messages are and uh, we can but it is, needs to come from a place of grace it needs to come from a place of humility right so sometimes it's just that it doesn't come from it comes from a place of arrogance and pride and anger anger not about the issue but about the person right and it completely breaks destroys right um while we need to be stirred up you know with righteous anger about what is happening uh, but it has to come from a place of humility right it cannot be from pride and arrogance okay um another way to bring in conviction is an indirect conviction like we see in scripture about how the prophet nathan in his conversation with king david right king david so he brings in con conviction so that can be a, you know an approach as well well we see that hey this is the evil in society or this is the condition of the church you know there's maybe there's prayerlessness maybe there is you know people are great you know uh, very passionate on sundays they come worship but then during the week there's absolutely no difference in their lives to the way other people live no difference in their lifestyle no difference in their values so there can be an indirect conviction right so how will you do that Mm. Story. Yeah. So you would say, okay, um, <laughs> about some person, about some this thing, and then about this man, this woman, this church. Not you, but someone else. <laughs> some people say that. No, <laughs> I'm not talking about you. I'm talking about someone else, <laughs> and then continue with the message. Yeah. So I've heard this, you know, um, where a person uh, talked about the prodigal son, right? And then, you know, he just went through that whole thing. But we realized the focus was actually on the older brother, right? So he, he said, "Hey, some of us are like the older brother. The church sometimes is like the older brother, right? The person is repent, the person is gone away, but we are not taking them." you know we're not reaching out to them we say hey this person let him stay condemned he squandered let him never come back to the father's house you know but the father's heart is that the younger son comes back so he said hey some of us are like that we are like the older brother right yes we know the condition yes that person has made some terrible mistakes but what did the father do what is the older brother doing and are we not like the older brother right it was a, so it was a very indirect way of convicting the attitude of people's hearts yeah so that was the thing. okay then uh, an appeal to god's love concern for their well-being and needs of others it can be an exhortation so it can be um, you know uh, uh, it, it can be with, with a lot of statistics uh, and an appeal uh, for change okay. then another one is vision casting the possibilities of what can happen when people gather together to pray to 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 do things um you know together in unity so you cast a vision right 
this is the possibility this is where we can go this is what god wants us to do okay so give the big picture um and uh, so vision is 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 about possibility is very positive it's very encouraging um and it's really lifts individuals and collectively also you know it just stirs up people to say that hey this is a possibility this is something that i can become in christ this is something that you know our family can become this is something that our marriage can experience this is something that you know i can be as a father as a mother as an individual you know this is possible in life right so it's a it's a casting of a vision um so we're not talk we're not presuming something we're not just giving some positive talk right for the sake of positive you know thinking or, you know, sometimes it's like that no uh, like you see on the internet a lot of things you know positive affirmation right just being positive for the sake of being positive no? but this has a root in scripture and you're painting the possibility the bigger picture of what scripture of what god's heart is right so we can present that right okay then it can also be a dilemma resolution this is similar to the argument but it's more like questions okay this is what is the problem in society okay this is what the issue is you know maybe something like gender confusion right this is the problem this is an issue right at the school level college level you know people are having confusion and it's it's more and more you know increasing and then the answer from scripture so it's more of a questions right question and answer um which is the next thing as well right um, um so uh, the the dilemma truth is more of a the issue but here it can be a question about any topic you know what is something and then you answer it you know what is um uh you know born again being born again or who is jesus you know questions like that right um and then you answer that okay um okay you can go through some of these things um i'm not going to repeat it right um stating the thesis justifying teaching methods and so on um okay just we have three more minutes let's look at um some of the laws of dynamic bible teaching okay so we are on page 55 in our notes okay okay some laws uh, or it, it just um, gives us a focus or emphasis what we should focus on what we can emphasize on okay first thing is to be learner oriented okay uh, meaning that you are actually thinking about the audience first what is it that they need to know and understand and you're focusing on that your whole teaching okay we're, we're not talking about preaching now we're just talking about teaching a bit so your whole whole approach is to you know meet that need okay learner oriented okay what is it that they need to learn so which means that the pace of which you do things can change right or you can even change the the intensity or whatever you had planned you know maybe you plan to talk about 10 things um but then you just focus on maybe two because that you realize that that is where you know people are at okay so it's you've changed it according to the need of the congregation or need of the audience right so and it's always you know that that needs to be the approach because that is what is going to be beneficial to the hearer okay so because what is the use you know if you've presented wonderful facts if you presented you know beautiful things but it's not really benefited the hearer okay so they are at a, they might say okay yeah he spoke good things but i didn't understand you know he spoke very you know wonderful things complex things was beautiful but then you know uh, what is your take home you know i didn't understand it right so learner oriented the second one is uh, expectation oriented right um so have an expectation about the audience right? that that you expect people to come to this by the end of the message you know, expect fruit right uh 
sometimes we can be very negative like we are thinking about it you know what to, i don't know what will happen it's natural to think that way i don't know what's going to happen i don't know whether we people will receive it or not i don't know people will uh, understand me or not uh, you know because we are having all those all those fears maybe um, challenge we're just focusing on ourselves but then have that expectation you know which is which comes from a place of faith saying you know no oh, this is what it is the people you know god is moving uh, it's not just me Uh, yes i'm going to be speaking but then the holy spirit is going to be speaking these words holy spirit is going to convict their hearts so you have that expectation there is going to be change right um the third uh, thing is application oriented okay so um meaning you know when we when we explain things and then if there is no application we talked about application application is really taking the truth and living it okay i'm taking it back i'm living it so have that let the teaching be application oriented what is that one thing at least one thing that i can take back and do in my life right um retention oriented what is retention oriented in fact when they go when they and they leave can they remember the message right what is it that you are doing to enable people to remember see i still remember the message that was preached during my wedding okay so uh, the pastor talked about four c's okay so he talked about communication he talked about care he talked about concern and then there was one more although i always have trouble with the fourth one <laughs> there were four c's okay so i remember that so when you are communicating when you are sharing help people retain it right uh, and some people are so good at it like um, some acronym right maybe you're preaching on love l o v e right each point maybe four points you presented it start with with so it's easy for them to recollect okay and uh, need oriented and equipping oriented are the next few, couple of things um, based on the need uh, based on what you want to equip them for okay okay so we'll stop here um you know you can, there's some practical things about what to do with the teaching okay it's uh, it might seem a little extreme uh you know it talks about practicing it talks about you know sharing it with another person who's exper- experienced uh etc so you know you can uh, go through that okay so um to so we'll, we'll stop here and then um, so like we were discussing next a class which is on next tuesday we will have two hours okay online students um so 9 to 9:50 and then 10 to 10:50 as well and during this um each one of you will present so come prepared okay all of you come prepared you can it's going to be randomly picked up it's not according to alphabetical order it's not going to be reverse alphabetical order also okay so uh, so yeah uh, yeah it's going to be a lottery so online students also so so online students just make sure that you're in an environment where you can switch on your camera switch on your mic and then you can present okay it's going to be only for 10 minutes right if you want okay the question was do we have to have a ppt you know to present it if you want if you think it will help you can otherwise you don't have to okay right thank you god bless bye